YouTube. Hello Marvelous Legends, this is David Display's Model Behaviour and these are the 101 facts about Marvel Legends. If you enjoy my content then join the 6-1 clicks by clicking the subscribe button and don't miss a single episode of Model Behaviour. The photographs for this countdown have been provided by the amazing VA Collector on Instagram. Give him a follow for more incredible Marvel Legends photography. Fact number one. Marvel Legends is a long-running action figure line based on the iconic characters of Marvel Comics. Fact number two. The figures were originally produced by Toybiz before the license was bought out by Hasbro. Fact number three. The line is primarily comprised of figures in the six inch scale. Fact number four. For those of you for whom size does matter, however, there have been spin-off lines produced in the 4, 8, and 12 inch variety. Fact number five. The Legends line initially began as a spin-off of the Spider-Man Classics line, also produced by Toy Biz. Fact number six. At its inception in 2002, the Marvel Legends line copied the clamshell packaging and the included comic book that had shipped with the Spider-Man Classics line. So there's no doubt, you certainly got a lot of bang for your buck back in the day. Fact number seven. Manufacturers have developed the practice of reusing the same mold for different figures. This has proven to be an extremely effective cost-saving technique. Some molds have been used to such an extent that collectors are extremely familiar with them, such as the Bucky Cap, Sunfire, and the much maligned Hyperion mold. Fact number eight. The first Toy Biz line back in 2002 was comprised of the franchise characters Captain America, Hulk, Iron Man, and curiously, Toad. One of these things is not like the other. Fact number nine. Toad in fact holds the distinction of not only being the first villain to be immortalized in the Legends line, but also the first figure to be made of a character who has never had an ongoing series of his own. Yet. Fact number 10. The second line had more of a Fantastic Four kind of feel to it, with figures of Doom, Doombot, Human Torch, Namor, and The Thing. Fact number 11. This started the unofficial tradition of Toy Biz and Hasbro avoiding the inclusion of entire teams in one wave, encouraging collectors to keep following the toy line in order to complete their collections. Fact number 12. December 2002 saw the release of the first demonic character in the Legends wave, that being Ghost Rider Danny Ketch. And if you think that's a bit of a weak fact to include, you clearly haven't had to sit down and think of 101 of these. Fact number 13. June 2003 saw the release of the first female Marvel Legends figure in the form of Elektra, who came with two swords, two sai, a back scabbard, and a samurai stand. Number 14. In November, we received our first cosmic entries into the Legends line, the Sentinel of the Spaceways, the Silver Surfer, and the cigar-chomping fowl himself, Howard the Duck. Number 50. From 2003 to 2006, we had box sets including X-Men Legends, Urban Legends, Spider-Man vs. The Sinister Six, Fantastic Four, Spider-Man's Fearsome Foes, Young Avengers, Monsters, and House of M. Number 16. The Ultimate Universe was recognized in December 2004 as the flag-waving, French-bashing Ultimate Captain America was released to the world. Early shipments have a paint error with grey paint on the 616 pants and blue on the Ultimate. A running change corrected this and the erroneously coloured figures became sought after by hardcore collectors. Number 17. In 2005, Toy Biz introduced us all to the concept of the Builder Figure. Referred to as a bath by the collector community, this started with Series 9. Each figure in the series was packaged with a piece of a larger figure. A consumer who bought each figure in the assortment would then have all the complete components to assemble a character unavailable in individual packaging. And the manufacturers have been laughing all the way to the bank ever since. Number 18. The very first Builder figure to be released was, of course, Galactus. Requiring parts from Bullseye, Deathlock, Hulk, Nightcrawler, Doctor Strange, War Machine, and Professor X, this figure towered above the existing Marvel Legends and truly set the standard for what we would expect in a Builder figure. Number 19. To this day, one of the rarest and most sought after Builder figures is the giant reptilian menace, Fin Fang Foom. According to eBay, the oracle of all sensible pricing information, a complete figure of this guy will set you back on average upwards of £400. Number 20. 
In 2006, we saw the evolution of an icon wave, in which figures came with a comic-sized book including a history and statistics of the character as well as original artwork. Number 21. Initially, the Marvel Legends line used the chase concept to introduce figures based on less popular or recognisable characters. These got their nickname not due to them bearing a striking likeness to actor Chevy Chase, but rather by being shipped in fewer quantities than the rest of the figures, thus causing collectors to chase after them. Number 22. Eventually, rather than entirely new figures, the chase concept evolved into variants. These included such things as alternate heads or a different colour scheme. Like the previous chase figures, these were highly sought after by collectors. Number 23. In 2005, a Marvel Legends Flatman figure was included as a joke cutout in the GLXmas special. It featured infinite points of articulation and three action phrases to be said with one's own voice. Number 24. The 2006 Face Off series pitted classic heroes against their arch nemesis. Sees. Ne nemesis? Nemesis? Ne nemesises. Fact 25. Trying their hand at a bit of a side hustle, Toybiz introduced Marvel Legends Showdown, a collectible tabletop game in which the primary components are 4 inch action figures and cards. Number 26. On January 1st, 2007, a day that will go down in infamy, or for me, depending on your opinion, Hasbro became the new license holder to the rights to produce toys and games based upon the Marvel Universe, and the world truly was never the same again. Number 27. The new Hasbro packaging did not include a comic book, and the new molds eliminated finger joints. These were a mainstay during the Toy Biz era, causing perhaps some alarm bells to start ringing. Number 28. In welcome and relieving news to collectors the world over, Hasbro did continue to include builder figure pieces. I mean, what would we do with our money if we didn't have to buy three figures in a wave that we didn't actually want? Number 28. The first builder figure to be released in the Hasbro era was 2007's Annihilus, requiring parts from Banshee, Beast, Emma Frost, Hercules, Gladiator Hulk, and Iron Man. This impressive looking bath gave fans hope that their beloved toy line was in safe hands. Fact number 30. 2007 marked the start of the San Diego, or San Diego, Comic-Con exclusive figures. Over the years, if you could brave the crowds and associated assault on the nasal senses, you could have the chance to get your hands on a She-Hulk, Stan Lee, Thor, or Hulk figure. Number 31. 2007 also gave us our first Age of Apocalypse legends in the form of Sabretooth and Weapon X, who were part of the Walmart exclusive Giant Man wave. Number 32. The chase figure in the wave was a burnt face Weapon X depicting how the character looked after getting barbecued towards the end of his AOA miniseries. Number 33. It would seem the apocalypse was occurring exclusively at Walmart and not just on Black Friday when 2009 saw their release of the Nemesis Builder Figure wave, with the bath going on to become extremely sought after by collectors. Number 34. The character of Nemesis was originally named Holocaust in the comics, however for obvious reasons this was changed before his toy was allowed to adorn shelves next to Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles. Number 35. 2007 saw the first complete movie themed wave. Based entirely on characters from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, this wave included Spidey, Mary Jane, Venom, Doc Ock, Harry Osborn and a bizarre looking Sandman builder figure. Number 36. The Spider Family were not the first movie characters to be immortalised as legends though. That honour would go to Jean Grey and Juggernaut from the much maligned X-Men The Last Stand movie, who managed to sneak their way into the blob wave earlier in the year. Number 37. Hasbro has a long tradition of doing fans' choice figures for their Star Wars license, but in 2008 they took their first shot at doing this for Marvel Legends. In a poll run through Toy Fair magazine, fans could pick which of eight Marvel characters they would want to see as an exclusive. And in the first time out, Sunfire beat such luminaries as the Silver Samurai and Gambit. Number 38. The figure is packaged on a unique blister card with a fiery backdrop and a large cardboard wrap around the bottom. Number 39. In 2008, the Marvel Legends line took a trip to the Savage Land with a three-pack box set of Kazar, Shana, and Zebu. Or Zabu? 
This collection is now highly sought after by completists looking to acquire those material possessions that Shana would hate so much. Number 40. During the late 2000s, production of Marvel Legends slowed down to the point at which people started to question whether or not the line was going to be scrapped altogether. Number 41. In fact, it was in 2008 that Hasbro stopped producing regular waves of figures, in large part due to the rising cost of plastic, causing them to create the Marvel Universe line, a 3 and 3 quarter scale to stand with Hasbro's G.I. Joes and Star Wars figures. Number 42. Hasbro revealed at the 2010 San Diego Comic Con that due to fan requests and the upcoming movies based on characters, and also because they like money, that the line would be making a comeback in 2012. Number 43. As it was proclaimed and so it came to pass that in January of 2012, Marvel Legends returned to store shelves and there was much rejoicing. Number 44. The Terax and Armin Zola waves were the first of the new releases in 2012, with each figure adorned with a sticker proudly declaring, The Return of Marvel Legends! Number 45. The Armin Zola wave included the character Dakin, who was the estranged son of Wolverine and Mariko Yashida. This character carries the interesting distinction of being the first openly pansexual character to be depicted in the Legends wave. I included that fact just because I seem to have a horse in this race. Also of note is that Microsoft Word autocorrects Armin Zola to Admin Zola, who I think is a much less exciting villain. Number 46. The Armin Zola wave also contains Wrecking Crew member Thunderball, the only Marvel character to be named after a Bond movie. Number 47. The Armin Zola wave also contains Wrecking Crew member Piledriver, the only character to be named after a wrestling move. Number 48. The Hitmonkey, Rocket Raccoon and Jubilee waves ushered in the mini builder figure concept. This mini builder figure concept has since been thankfully retired, or more appropriately, hopefully taken out back and shot in the head. In 2013, Hasbro released the Puck series to coincide with The Wolverine as a Hasbro Previews exclusive featuring a builder figure of Puck. Planned, though not released, were an alternate version of Cyclops in his Phoenix Force outfit and a modern version of Rogue as an alternative to Emma Frost. Number 50. A rare and highly sought after box set is the 2013 Thunderbolt set, featuring Luke Cage, Moonstone, Ghost, Satana and Crossbones. Number 51. The Thunderbolts roster has included a huge number of characters over the years, and thus is represented in many chase figures who feature the Thunderbolts logo. So for the hardcore collectors who want every criminal forced to do time on the side of the Angels, they're going to have some serious hunting to do. Number 52. The following year at the 2013 San Diego Comic Con, Hasbro announced that Marvel Legends would be given a new start as the Marvel Legends Infinite series, starting with the Mandroid Wave. And this, folks, is where we really kick into high gear. Number 53. Since the Mandroid release in 2014, Hasbro have produced a whopping 47 waves of Marvel Legends, ensuring that collectors the world over had little shelf space and very little disposable income. Number 54. The Ultimate Green Goblin wave was the first of the new era to include figures from both movies and comics, thus ensuring that fans who only followed one line would be forced to buy figures they didn't want in order to complete a builder figure. And thus we started down the expensive road we all walk today. Number 55. Wave number four, the Jubilee series, is one of the hardest waves to acquire in full. This wave was initially released only at Toys R Us. It was then supposed to ship to comic stores a few weeks later, but before that could happen, Hasbro announced to Diamond that it had sold out of the assortment, making this ultimately an exclusive Toys R Us collection. Number 56. The X-Men's woes did not stop there, as all mutants would be conspicuously absent from the Legends waves all the way through up until the Juggernaut wave of 2016. Number 57. It is widely speculated that the absence of the X-Men was due to Disney not having yet acquired the film rights to the mutants. Disney was reluctant to push brands and properties that they did not themselves fully own lock, stock and barrel. Number 58. 
This change was felt in the Marvel comics at the time as well, as the X-Men were subtly phased out and replaced by similar characters called the Inhumans. Fortunately, saner heads would prevail, the X-Men returned to prominence, and we never got that Marvel Legends Inhumans wave that no one was asking for. Number 59. To mark the release of Avengers Age of Ultron, did I say Mark? To cash in on the release of Avengers Age of Ultron, Hasbro released a five-pack featuring re-released or repainted figures from previous waves, some of which had not previously been available in Europe. Number 60. In the autumn of 2015, a wide-eyed young comic book fan walked into a shop in downtown Osaka with his girlfriend and fell in love the moment he saw the Ben Reilly Spider-Man from the Absorbing Wave. Feeling generous, his partner purchased the figure for him and kick-started a passion that would last till this very day. The relationship shortly thereafter ended. Number 61. In a surprise twist though, the couple remained best of friends and continue to talk legends to this very day, because friends who play together, stay together. Number 62. The display case of choice for most collectors is the IKEA Detolf glass door cabinet. According to the IKEA catalog, this is a glass display cabinet with glasses all the way around and three glass shelves for displaying cut glasses. The furniture has a solid base to support its entire structure and a small footprint making it useful in tight spaces. Number 63. In 2016, like any successful band, Hasbro decided to release a Best of Marvel Legends line. This is an annual series of UK and Australia exclusive waves that solely repackage figures and baths based on characters from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Number 64. Also in 2016, 12-inch Legends returned, effectively reviving the concept of the Icons line in all but name. The figures are more expensive and therefore aimed at a more adult collector market. <laughs> yeah, right. 30 quid for War Machine? Yeah, I, I guess that's just for the little kids. Number 65. 2016 was clearly the year for creating new revenue streams, as Hasbro announced a line of high-end roleplay accessories. No, not like that. After the release of the first two items, a poll was held to determine future entries in the line, which went on to include Star-Lord's Helmet, Black Panther's Mask, the Infinity Gauntlet, and many more. Number 66. The Juggernaut Wave of 2016 saw the X-Men return to prominence in the Marvel Legends line in a big way. Since exploding back on the scene with this wave, the mutants have dominated shelf space with particular attention paid to figures of the characters who featured in the 92 Jim Lee run and classic cartoon. Number 67. It's no surprise that the early 90s X-Men are most in demand, as it's the people who followed these characters as little kids in the early 90s that are now adult collectors of today with disposable income and poor impulse control. That's certainly the case with me, except I have even less disposable income and even less impulse control. Number 68. The 2016 Absorbing Man wave features Speed Demon, whose accessory is the disembodied head of Silvermane that drives around in a remote control car, making him the first figure to have a completely distinct and separate character as an accessory, even if it is a hilariously stupid one. Number 69. Appropriately enough for this number, it was around 2016 that some Marvel Legends collectors began to notice that the female figures were beginning to look slightly less fully figured. Some folks also began to suggest that realistic looking guns were being phased out and replaced with more fantasy looking blasters. It was hypothesized that these changes and attempts at sanitizing the line may have been the result of Disney wanting a more child friendly product. This of course is purely down to speculation, but who doesn't love a good boob related conspiracy theory? Number 70. The 2017 Man-Thing wave was the first time characters from the Marvel Netflix shows had been depicted as legends. These being Jessica Jones, Punisher, Daredevil, and Elektra. Number 71. The 2017 Spider-Man Homecoming wave was the first and fortunately only wave to feature a builder figure that wasn't even a character. Rather, fans were expected to buy every figure in order to assemble the MCU Vulture Wings. This decision was met with a generally dubious response from the fan base. Number 72. The Venom Space Knight wave saw the debut of Ashley Barton, aka Spider Bitch, making her the first character to appear from the Old Man Logan story. Number 73. 
After a 12 year absence, the Age of Apocalypse quietly sneaked back into the Legends line with the inclusion of Blink in the Caliban wave. Number 74. Not content to punish consumers' wallets with their regular waves, Hasbro began releasing Vintage Waves. The Vintage Waves consist mostly of retooled or repainted figures featuring older designs and packaging inspired by Toy Biz's Marvel Super Heroes line from the 1990s, as well as the lines from cartoons like Spider-Man the Animated Series. Number 75. It is currently rumoured that a Firestar figure, packed in with the adorable little doggy Miss Lion, is in the works for the vintage Spider-Man wave, based on her appearance in Spider-Man and his amazing friends. Number 76. A range of figures were offered free with the purchase of a new Marvel Unlimited Plus digital comic subscription at marvel.com. Ultron, Rocket Raccoon, Rescue, Captain Marvel, Tony Stark, Venom Punisher and Terra Inc. could all be yours along with nearly the entire back catalogue of the Marvel Universe. Seriously, if you don't have Marvel Unlimited, go and get Marvel Unlimited because if you're not buying Legends, it's the best money you can spend. Number 77. The button mashers over at GameStop were able to acquire themselves a range of exclusive figures in an effort to keep punters visiting brick and mortar video game emporiums. These included Back in Black Deadpool, PS4 Spider-Man, Ultron and Hulk. Number 78. In 2018 the bar was raised yet again with the introduction of deluxe figures. These figures come at a higher price point and are larger than your average Legends or come with additional accessories. Archangel, Giant Man, Venom, Black Widow and Kingpin number among the many being released. Number 79 2018 seemed to be the year for pushing the boat out as far as bells and whistles are concerned as Hasbro gave us the Riders Wave, a series of figures that come packed with vehicles much in the style of the Toy Biz legendary Riders Wave. Number 80 with the recent release of the Frank Castle Rider figure, Hasbro have given us something of a Frank Castle timeline. We now have Classic Punisher, the Ghost Rider, and the Cosmic Ghost Rider, so we can track Frank's two-wheeled descent into Cosmic Damnation, which, let's face it, looks pretty awesome. Number 81. The PS4 Spider-Man figure, released exclusively at GameStop, became the first Marvel Legends figure to be based entirely on a character from a video game. Number 82. The PS4 version of Peter Parker did eventually make his debut in the 616 comics by appearing in the multi-dimensional epic Spider-Verse sequel, Spider-Geddon. Number 83. Since 2015, online retailer Amazon has had a deal to secure exclusive figures to sell on their website. Some of these figures have become highly sought after, such as the Defenders box set and the Days of Future Past Wolverine and Sentinel. Number 84. In 2019, us limeys over the pond got figures just for us, with the London Comic Con convention exclusives, these being Grey Hulk and Rob Liefeld's Deadpool. These figures were later released internationally and we all felt a little less smug. Number 85. In May 2019, the website Comic Book Resources ranked their top 10 Marvel Legends. The top three in their opinion were the Venom Wave Carnage, Ghost Rider Rider and Juggernaut Wave Deadpool. And I gotta say, those are some strong picks. Number 86. If it's grails you're after, then according to Google, the rarest Marvel legend is Blue Wasp from the Modoc series. Then it's the Crimson Dawn variant of Psylocke and Silver Shirted Luke Cage from the Mojo series. Number 87. In 2017, I met my beautiful girlfriend, and due to us meeting in Japan and then living together over there before moving back to our home countries of England and New York, she's never actually seen my Marvel Legends collection. Boy, is she in for a surprise. Number 88. To mark the 80th anniversary of Marvel Comics, Hasbro decided to celebrate by helping themselves to more of our money. They did this by releasing some stunningly spectacular new figures and box sets featuring new renderings of classic Avengers, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor and Hulk, alongside more modern characters from properties such as Deadpool, X-Factor and the MCU. Number 89. After testing the water with Blink's appearance two years prior, the Age of Apocalypse finally exploded back into the Legends line with a complete wave consisting of X-Man, Dark Beast, Morph, Jean Grey, Weapon X, Sunfire, Wild Child, and a hideously terrific looking bath 
in the form of the Sugar Man. Number 90. The Age of Apocalypse wave was bolstered later that year by the addition of the Deluxe Apocalypse, a retooled version of the original Builder figure, complete with his Age of Apocalypse accessories, proving to Hasbro that the 90s is a cash cow that will never run dry. Number 91. 2020 saw the introduction of the first Marvel Legends HasLab project. These are premium crowdfunded items that are either too expensive, massive or niche to see traditional retail releases. The project was launched with a 26.3 inch Sentinel, the largest Marvel Legends figure to date. Number 92. The Sentinel was met with unanimous gasps, both in wonder at its size and horror at its price. The $350 sticker though did nothing to dampen the enthusiasm of ardent collectors though, and the Sentinel was funded in record time, smashing all previous records for HasLab projects. After initially requiring 6,000 backers to go into production, the project funding finally closed with over 22,000. That's a lot of angry girlfriends right there. Number 93. In May of 2020, the Legends landscape was changed forever when David Display's model behavior made his first Marvel Legends related video. Thrilled to have received his Ghost Rider from Amazon Germany, he quickly took to Facebook and proceeded to excitedly rip open his new favorite figure. Oh, look at me there. Just a kid. 94. Also in May, the Gamerverse wave was released, proving that PS4 Spider-Man wasn't the only video game character who would get the Legends treatment, and also proving to Hasbro that they had a whole new line of figures to gouge our wallets with. Number 95. In 2020, Hasbro released the Marvel Legends Deadpool Head Premium Interactive Talking Electronic App Enhanced Adult Collectible for the collector who has everything. Number 96. In 2019, the all-consuming monolith that is Disney was able to acquire Fox and with it, the X-Men movie license was finally returned home to Disney Marvel. Of course that meant that Hasbro could now produce figures based on the Fox X-Men movies and they haven't wasted any time in doing so, already in 2020 giving us characters from all different X-Men movies and spin-offs, including Wolverine, First Class and Deadpool. Number 97. The reacquisition of the X-Men came at the perfect time as the film franchise was celebrating the 20th anniversary of the initial movies being released. This 20 year anniversary gave Hasbro the chance to release some beautiful figures based on the property and also made many of us feel very old indeed. Number 98. As this video goes live, we're currently eagerly awaiting the release of the X-Men Hellfire Club box set a collection of characters that has been requested for a long time and will make collectors of the classic Clermont comics and X-Men cartoon very happy. Number 99. Speaking of characters on the cusp of release, many of the collecting community had been clamoring for a re-release of some of the much sought after 90s X-Men figures and it would seem their prayers have been answered as Hasbro teased that in 2021 we may be seeing a release of a best of the X-Men wave. Fact number 100! As far as the future is concerned, at the time of making this video, a Venom wave has just been announced featuring a figure of the Sony movie Venom, further cementing the character's links to the wider MCU. Also, a new Spider-Man wave has been rumoured, with hints at the tallest builder figure ever made, which the scuttlebutt suggests might be a stilt man. And finally, with the success of the HasLab Sentinel project, more premium figures are almost guaranteed. It truly is a great and expensive time to be a Marvel Legends collector. Number 101. And fact number 101 is that Marvel Legends are absolutely awesome. But you knew that already. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this countdown of the 101 Marvel Facts and you didn't mind me digging a little too deep and getting a little tenuous with some of them. But hey, this is a passion project and what I lack in knowledge I make up for in passion, but that does make getting facts a little difficult. But hey, I hope you enjoyed the ride. If you liked what you saw here and you want to see more, join the 61 Clicks by clicking the subscribe button. If I got any facts wrong, then comment below, let me know. Or if I missed out an amazing fact about Marvel Legends, don't be shy. 
get on the keyboard, make a comment and berate me for my ignorance and lack of knowledge on the subject I claim to be so passionate about. In the meantime though guys, thanks for being Marvelous Legends, thanks for watching David Display's Model Behaviour, I'll see you in the next episode and don't be articulate.